Greetings, students, and welcome to another fun-filled day here at Horror in the Halls. <laughs> What's up, kids, and welcome to Horror in the Halls. I'm Bob, a.k.a. Mr. Holland. And I'm Jenny, a.k.a. Mrs. Hill. We're just two high school teachers talking about all the spooky stuff we love. And in this week's lesson, it's Fright Night for real when we discuss 2011's Fright Night remake. (laughs) Creepy. So, yeah, man, what do you think about this one? I loved this one. Loved it. Man. I did love this one. So many people hate this movie. I don't even care. I don't either. (laughs) I love so it. Let's do the rundown real quick, and then we'll get into uh, why they're all wrong. So yeah, okay. Fright Night released August 19th, 2011. It's got a runtime of 106 minutes. Uh, directed by Greg Gillespie. His notable works are kind of weird because they're not horror at all. You got Mr. Woodcock, Lars and the Real Girl, Million Dollar Arm, The Finest Hours, I, Tanya, and then Cruella, which is kind of random. Interesting. I know, right? Screenplay by Martin Noxon. I think she kind of took what Tom Holland wrote for the original Fright Night, not Spider-Man Tom Holland, by the way, but just a different Tom Holland. Um, and kind of adapted it and I think was very successful. It was very successful. I'm going to try to say this dude's name. Cinematography is by Javier Aguerra Sabi. I, I really can't say that and I apologize if you ever listen to this. But um, <laughs> he did The the Road, Gosh, Warm Bodies, The Poltergeist remake. He's a Ooh. cinematographer on Goosebumps and Thor Ragnarok. Ooh. Dude's got some, uh, some cred there. Yes, he does. Had a $30 million budget, but its box office was $4. 41 million. So oh, it was lame. a complete bomb. Uh, well, y'all the suck. I know, right? It even got a sequel, though. So it wasn't that much of a bomb. Like, yeah. It's a 72 yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes with a 59% audience score. Again, it's just haters. And it had so a 3.0 on Letterboxd. That's not too terrible. No, no. I mean, that's about average. Most movies got get 2.8 to 3.2 on Letterboxd. That's why I don't really trust okay. them all that much. But whatever. Um, The cast, though, in this one is, I mean, it's fucking stellar. I know. I love it. I love it. all of it. I mean, it's a really good cast. I mean, Anton Yelchin, like, is Charlie Brewster. He's great. Oh, my gosh. So Brewster? sad that he died in the craziest way I ever. I know. It's um, depressing. Great uh, actor. Colin, Colin Farrell Trek. killed it as Jerry, I uh, thought. Yeah. I normally yeah. think Colin Farrell's weird, but he kind of killed it as Jerry. Christopher yeah, Mintz-Ploss here is, uh, you know, McLovin is Edward e- Evil Ed Lee. Great job. And then, of course, the yes. freaking doctor, David Tennant as Peter Vincent. I know. I'm so excited. I stole like, the show. Oh, my God. And then this poorly named person here, Imogen Poots, as Amy Peterson. Amy Poots. Such a bad name. I don't, what's funny is, uh, Johnny goes, where did I hear that name before? I said, because the last time I saw it, I said, her last name is Poots. That is terrible. I know, right? As Poots. Uh, And we see, I see a a lot of stupid names as a teacher, but that Poots is terrible. I feel sorry for her. I I know her high school life had to have been just, just terrible. Just yeah. terrible. I'd have been like poot. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Tony Collette plays Jane Brewster, which I love Tony Collette. I think she's one of the most underrated actresses. Oh, she's good. Ever. She can play uh, anything. She's so good. So good. Um, Dave Franco's in this is a rando. Oh my gosh. Who's I ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. Lisa Loeb's in this, of course, which is also hilarious. Wait, uh, who is she? She's Ed, Ed's mom. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I, I guess know, right? I wasn't really paying close attention to her. I love Lisa Loeb. It's hilarious. And then, of course, Chris Sarandon <laughs> makes a little cameo as the angry driver. It was kind of cool. Nice little throwback. No, I was super pumped about that. I said, shut up. Is that who I think it is? <laughs> I know. Aaron said the same thing. She went, oh, that's him. I was like, it is him. <laughs> what? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I, was, I was so excited. It's funny. Like, I've seen this movie before. You know what I mean? Like, I watched it when it came out. And yeah. generally, I'm not the biggest fan of, of remakes because yeah. a lot of times they're just trying to redo the original film right yes but i feel like there's some that they modernize it in a way that is successful like this one i feel like instead of trying to redo an 80s movie which there's no way to catch that or to kind of capture that tone or that theme, that feel. They modernized it. They fit it right into the 2000s in a really good way, I think. Yeah, you know, this is. is coming 2011, so it's right after the aughts. You know, it hit, it hit it good. That kind of feeling, that emotion from that time. They did a really good job. I think the setting helps a lot. There's just a lot about this movie I like, honestly. I, like I a have lot. a long list of things that I, I loved about it, so... 
A lot of it has to do with the writing. So. Uh, it might have got to do with some of the shots, man. This guy killed it. That opening shot is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's like that aerial shot, and you see that the most ridiculous looking, desolate little square of town ever. Oh, yeah, that's neat. You know? mm-hmm. And then, which I thought was really good, and the opening music is ominous and strong and kind of droning. You're like, man, some, some shit's about to go down. And then it goes straight yeah, to him murdering to an entire that. family, which was awesome. Yeah, the score was done really well. Yes. It, it, I, made, I made note of that for sure. It wasn't so much a character like like we've talked about before, no. but it definitely enhanced the film. It, it enhanced the the suspense and yeah. the like the uneasiness of what was to come. And then obviously the opening actual song that everyone should know is "Pumped Up Kicks," and I was like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that's a good one." It was all good. Like I love that opening yeah. scene. Like the kid coming good. running out of there, and you hear you hear the vampire sounds, which is mm-hmm. D. Bradley Baker, which is crazy to me that he made all those crazy vampire sounds. He's a real Who's prominent that? voice actor. He's a real prominent oh, okay. voice actor. Um, but like just that scene I thought was really awesome. You know, he's running and he's falling and then it cuts over to him hiding under the bed and like that cool, like he's trying to unlock the gun and then he's like sliding his dad slowly away. I really wanted him to be like laying down next to him and be like, hi, that would have been hilarious. Yeah. I, um, I kind of almost thought that that was going to happen, but yeah. Cause the way he did it, I was like, but that was still mm-hmm. kind of cool. Cause the kid's like, just he's so out of it and he's like, what was his name? Adam, I think. And he's so like yeah. free and trying to unlock this gun which to me i told to aaron i was like what is the point of having a gun for protection if it's locked up i I can see it's in a safe but it's under your mattress with a trigger guard on it you're just gonna die i don't i don't think i don't know a lot about guns so i didn't even know that was a thing so well yeah it's supposed to be like to make them safe and i understand like from a gun owner perspective or like a kid who grew up around guns like making them safe that's awesome but if that gun is there for home protection if you can't get that key out fast enough you're just getting murdered or what if your keys are not anywhere near you like the dad just happened to have the keys in his pocket because that was a tiny tiny key too that's what i'm saying they're like those little vending machine not vending machine yeah coat machine keys those little barrel keys and i was like yeah why would you have these i didn't even know that was a thing so i was like what is he reaching for and i was like oh because i i I don't know anything about guns i'm i'm really uh stupid when it comes to that stuff (laughs) I know far too many things about guns, but like my dad is. A, I have pepper spray. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. My dad is like an avid hunter and stuff. So I grew up around that nonsense, yeah. which is fine. You know, whatever. But I thought that was kind of silly. Like I, it was very like 2000s, like guns are bad. You know, uh, I want to say post Columbine, of course. So it was very like, yeah, everything was wrong in the world. Um, mm-hmm. So that was cool and all, but still silly. But I love the opening scene. I thought it was really strong. Um, just a really strong intro to the movie, really. And don't get me wrong. I love the original, but it, I like the original, too. I don't I don't necessarily love the original, but I do like the original. Yeah, I was three in nineteen eighty five. So like that's why like I don't understand a lot of people our our age having this like and I'm I'm honestly just as guilty about it. This kind of like almost feverish dedication to eighties movies. None of us actually oh. understood the tone of the eighties because we were children in the eighties. I wasn't even born in eighty five. Or so I was saying, born in eighty five. I was three years old. So like the nineties, so yes. Need. I knew the tone in the 90s. I was like 10. I was yeah. old enough to understand. I was three. You know what I mean? I probably watched mm-hmm. this movie in the 80s for sure. So like I said before, I was like the test kid. My mom let me watch whatever. But like, and granted, it was very much responsible for the resurgence of vampire films. So that's why I get so much praise. Yeah, I love I love me some good vampire but movies. If you're 40 and under, you can like the movie, but to be like, oh, the tone, you don't get the tone because you don't understand what, how the, what the 80s were. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's just weird to me that people are so crazy. About I'm not usually a big fan of remakes unless they're done well. Yes. Yes. So that's and that's where I'm at on this one. It was just not. done really well. Well, this is huh? one of those movies that people were like, you shouldn't touch that movie. It doesn't need to be remade. You know what I mean? That was where the anger came yeah. from. Like, I think um, I watched a cool video on it while I was doing my research. And this guy was saying, he was like the, I can't remember what, what side he was on. He was like an Irish guy. And he was saying a bunch of people when this came out, hated this movie because it was like the thing to do. I don't like this movie. I can't believe you'd remake Fright Night. Then you ask him now, you know, 10 years later, how'd you feel about this movie? Because it was a t- I think it was from 2021. And he was like, oh, it was a good movie. You know, their, their opinion had changed because it wasn't like what everyone else was saying. You know what I mean? Like a okay. lot of this movie was like, oh, I don't like it because it's a remake. Not because of what it is or because of anything in the movie where a lot of remakes fall flat because they're just garbage. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I guess I can I can kind of understand if you really love something, you just love the aesthetic of something and you want it to be 
similar and it's not because i mean there's some similarities in the two but essentially they're drastically different yes there's a lot more story to it too which i of course i appreciate very much because i i want to know like more backstory a lot of the time and when i don't get that i'm like eh, i wish i had more of that yeah so and you got some of that i thought was kind of cool i liked Mm -hmm. the connection um with peter vincent's character to the same oh man you know i do that was cool yeah i loved peter vincent he was yeah he was great he was was great great. it's it's david Tennant, right you know what i mean like you can't go wrong with david Tennant. i think uh bloody disgusting kind of said it best you know i was reading theirs and it said you can tell whether when a remake has good enough intentions to treat its original with respect versus the futile experience of replication which i think is really like they intend to take a movie they probably loved and modernize it because that's really what i view yeah. it as not so much mm-hmm. as a remake but a modernization of the story because they're pretty true to some of the dialogue like it's some oh, of the yeah. stuff is carried straight over the look of amy for uh, you know her final vampire form in both movies is very similar um yes colin farrell's is her not outfit and, even isn't it and, yeah her, her outfit, outfit is was- it's uh sort of hers is more of a modern version yeah yeah but it essentially she's in a dress and it's well that's every bride of dracula right everyone has that white flowing dress when they become like the bride of you know and she was essentially the bride of dracula which he doesn't they go into a lot more of that story in the original with this painting of his lost love and stuff it's very like brahm stoker and style inspired Mm -hmm. in the original whereas this one was more like oh what's up i like your girlfriend you know what i mean she's oh she's hot i'm taking her from you which was kind of creepy um but i liked you know what I mean? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, he's a vampire. They're all creepy. Uh, yeah, they're supposed to be. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't discriminate. Well, not because he's like, you know, 400 and... 30 you know he's like a perpetually that old you know what i mean yeah so he didn't care um it's funny that you mentioned you you keep mentioning like the remake stuff because at the top of my notes like before i start like talking about music and characters and everything i i said it's almost unfair to compare the two because they're both done really well for their own reasons so and i i like the first one so i'm not I'm not at all like knocking the first one at all because I actually had Johnny watch the first one. I said, you really should watch it because it's fun. It's just a fun watch to sit down and watch the original. And then this one was so much fun to watch. I, I was a little skeptical, which is funny because I, you wouldn't think that I would be. I love because I love all things vampire stuff. Anything yeah. vampire related. I'm like, oh, uh, yes, give it to me. All of, all of it. I want all of it. So, yeah, it was good. I, I liked all of it. I loved all so, of it. I have two running themes, which I, what's funny to me is I make my myself chuckle when i do these because it's not really like some of them aren't legitimate themes i'm just like <laughs> kind of poking fun at things but um my first one was don't invite a vampire into your home that's uh, just ever. really stupid ever <laughs> don't you ever do that it's stupid um and then i said always make sure the vampire is dead before you walk away from it i'm like why well, is this always a theme in and- <laughs> Vampire movies. Y'all didn't even wait to see if it if it was dead. You just walked away thinking, oh, it's fine. No, yeah, he's, he's it's good. not fine. You walked away from him like two or three times. He's not dead. You're talking about when they hit him on the road? Well, there's a couple of times where they, I know two for sure. One was on the road and the other one was closer to the end where uh, they're in Peter Vincent's like loft area where he's like his museum-ish stuff is. And she yeah. like pours holy water all over, or dumps it on his face. And then walks away from him like that's gonna kill him. I ain't gonna kill him. I know. Well, I think that I think that particular instance was more her just trying to get away. I sh- well, then but then they left and they're like, oh, we're fine. No, you're not. No, he's alive. Well, she shot him six times. You know what I mean? And then he was like huh, werewolves, which was kind of cool. And she was like, that was uh, funny. Which that was the thing about this one I liked better. I didn't necessarily like in the original one that Ed was a wolf. How this one he was just a vampire in the original. Was he? Ed, yeah, he's that. He remember he's that crazy wolf. And when Peter Vincent kills him, he uh he like turns back into himself. But he's that giant gray wolf. Uh, okay, yeah. Which I was like, okay, I was like, okay, that's cool. I mean, I guess that's in again. Brom Stroker. But yeah, I, I was like, eh, whatever, man. That's weird. Um, I I liked how they set up Ed's character as quickly as they did. And I liked him a lot more than I did the original Ed. Because I thought the original Ed was like a complete douche. Well, yeah, their roles were switched. I think in the original, Ed was more the one that didn't believe until he got attacked. 
Whereas now it's yeah. Charlie. Charlie's like, whatever, man. I'm too cool for you. That's true because Charlie's more of the douchebag in this yeah. one. Like, like yeah. you say some really pretty hateful things. I, know. In the I wrote that down. I was like, Charlie's an ass. And then yeah, he like he, believes real fast, and he's odd about it. Yeah, he and he goes like spiraling into his belief of that. <laughs> like immediately. Yeah, I know. He's. Like, I'm like, dang it! Did not it did not take you long? To, well, I guess because he did see the video, that makes more yeah. sense. Well, plus he, you know, he was already of that mindset before he decided he was cool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, based on how their interactions, because that, in that video that Ed's talking about releasing to them, like, you know, LARPing in their backyard, he doesn't look that much younger. <laughs> no, it's really funny, though. It was. I would have been like, so what? I was having fun. Exactly. Who cares? I don't know. Uh-huh. If one of my buddies had a LARPing video, I'd make fun of them, too. When I was younger, I thought LARPing was lame. I would have thought it was hilarious. Yeah. It's not bad now, but I've been like, dude, what are you doing with your life? I, I did not care one single bit what anybody thought of me ever in high school. Yeah, sadly. I, I had. Here's the thing. I was the kid that didn't want any friends in high school. I just kind of wanted to be left alone with my book. I was that kid. And then Amanda McGee came along and ruined all of that for me. <laughs> oh, I hope she listens to this. <laughs> she says it all the time. Mm, like, I had to it. work for this. But anyways, I, I wouldn't have cared if anybody saw any video of me doing something stupid. Because I would be like, whatever, it's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's good to be secure yourself like that. Charlie was not. Ed was. Uh, not like that now. I'm more self-conscious now than I used to be. <laughs> Stupid. Anyways. Stupid adulthood. It's fine. It's fine. This was interesting. Apparently, Colin Farrell had, was really concerned about his character. We said he was too much of a sexual predator, and he wanted to change the script because of it. Um, That's what a vampire does. I know, right? I he mean, likes to apparently be extra, because he also requested a monologue in Latin, and then he even got a Latin tutor to teach him how to read a monologue in Latin. But they cut it from the movie. Probably because it was so bad. Oh, apparently not. The Latin tutor was apparently so fascinated by him that she wrote a scholarly article detailing her time on set. Like, he was apparently what? real engaged in learning this Latin monologue with this tutor. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It would have been really cool, but it probably would have slowed the movie down a little bit. A little bit, made yeah. It, yeah, so. Well, plus it would have been weird, especially when Peter Vincent says that they're a Mediterranean version of vampires. Yeah. Like, why mm-hmm. are you talking Latin, bro? That's weird. And also, why that are you white? True. But whatever. Because he's dead. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> he's goofy are looking. white, dude. Well, I'm just not. They're not white. They're just pale. They're pale. I'm thinking of blood. Um, I did like this one. I thought he was way more aggressive than the first one, where the first one's kind of like low key. Yeah, I'm a vampire. He was like, as soon as he knew Charlie knew what was up, I'm blowing your house up. Like, that was a huge escalation. Okay. That's, I made a note about that because I was like, dang, that is some brutal shit. I said, what is he doing? I know. And I was like, and his mom's sitting there like she ain't believing him and stuff. And I'm like, okay, who digs up ground or earth that hard like that? Like he was digging up like whole chunks of earth just with a shovel. Yeah. And I was like, um, do you know how hard it is to sh- to, to shovel hard earth? It's super hard. Yeah, He's like, what's he doing to my yard? Um, He's digging up your gas line. Okay. Yeah. I said, oh, shit. He's going to blow up the house with them in it. He's like. <laughs> Uh, I don't need an invitation with the, when there's no house or yeah, something. I was like, yeah. gosh, that's scary. It was pretty brutal, though. I kind of liked it. it. He was he was ready. He was like, fine, you're not going to let me in. I'm going to force my way in. <laughs> Which I liked. I thought it was kind of cool. It was cool. You know, I I like all the throwbacks to the original. Like, there's a you know, the scene like he's always eating those green apples all the time. Like, they make an emphasis yeah. that he's eating apples. Well, apparently that's because Chris Sarandon decided that a vampire would have fruit bat DNA in his system and therefore would eat a lot of fruit. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. That's a cool yeah, connection. Yeah, so that was like a throwback. He was like, yeah, we they should eat fruit. They have fruit bats, which is weird. But, but I mean, fruit bats are cute and not like they eat fruit, not yeah. blood. They should be vampire bats who eat like insects and shit. That's hey, kind of stupid. That's why he eats I don't know. fruit and then also it's, drinks blood. It's neat and also stupid. But anyways, um, I, I notated some um some like good quotes. And before we get like too far in, I wanted to talk about a couple of them because it was when um Charlie goes to talk to Peter Vincent as the like he pretends to be from like a newspaper or something. Yeah. That and, real shoddy looking credential. I know. And I was like, it was, when they were like, he's talking about him being a vampire or talking about Jerry being a vampire. And he goes, Jerry, the vampire. And I was like, Oh my God, I laughed so hard. 
because <laughs> I'm like, that is kind of a stupid name. It was. And you can have anything the, else but I Jerry. Think Charlie mentions that earlier when Ed tells him. He's like, who oh, he does? Jerry. And he's like, I don't know. It's just his name. I didn't <laughs> name him. It's funny. Yeah, it's, yeah. That is what he did. But yeah. it was really funny from David Tennant's character. I was like, yes. um, And then he was accent. like, asking him if he wants something to drink. Because he's like, oh, we couldn't figure out what he was drinking. And Johnny's like, is that an absinthe? Is like, like drinking like, like it's Kool-Aid or something? Because he no, put it, ice in it. I, it's Midori. Okay. I was like, I don't know yeah. what it is. I don't drink. He's but just throwing he back was, Midori. He goes, he goes, too much for you? One of Shirley Temple. And I was like, that whole scene was the best thing to me. I just laughed the whole thing. And the whole time he's just pulling off his hair and goatee and earrings and, like, and stuff. Scratching at his rash. And I'm like, Ugh. You're so I know. gross. I made a note about that. I said, it's weird seeing the doctor scratch out his junk. <laughs> He's like, I got a rash. And uh-uh. I'm like, oh, okay, doctor. Uh, that's terrible. That was weird. Yeah. I, I, there was a couple of quotes, my favorite one, where he's like, uh, what do he say? And the early one, he's talking to Ed. He's like, no one lives in Vegas. And Ed's like, genius, you live in Vegas. And he's like, oh, yeah. Like, just like stupid. Like, made no sense. <laughs> stupid. Oh, my gosh. Dude, one oh, thing man. I couldn't stand about this thing is every time Jerry calls Charlie Guy, I wanted to punch him in the throat. I hate being called guy so much. Like, hey, guy. I'm like, I will kill you to death. Don't call me guy. It's so dumb. I hate teacher lady. I think that is the rudest thing you could ever say to me. My my name is listed everywhere in my room. Stop freaking calling me teacher lady. I am not a teacher lady. Just and I'm not it. your bruh. <laughs> I just respond back with whatever, bruh. Calm down, bruh. <laughs> I just go ahead. I I kind of like laugh at them hysterically, and they're like, "Oh, you're so mean." I'm like, "Yeah, I am." So those of you that have not seen this movie, we've been ranting about for 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, the plot of this movie is. The kid has a new neighbor. No one sees him. They finally meet him at nighttime. He's a little sketch, kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Kid's best friend thinks he's a vampire. Kid's best friend disappears. Kid goes way on the deep end about him being a vampire. Mm -hmm. And then it escalates thusly. Like it just, everything starts going crazy for Charlie. Uh, Yeah. After he blows his house up, the movie just full speed ahead. Man, it was. Because it even the scenes at the beginning when he's sneaking in, I felt were like really well done than they it were. was in the first one. Because yes. um, he, what I liked about it is it, he made it very clear that he knew that Charlie was in the house. Oh, yeah. And he just let him yeah. be in the house. And it's like, that vampire knows you're in there. What you doing? <laughs> I know. He's so, walking around like, shh, shh, shh. I'm like, come on. First off, she's breathing like Darth Vader. <laughs> I know. I was like. <laughs> like, come on down. And he freaking allowed him to take her out into the yard where she freaking blew up into ashes. I was like, yeah. damn, that is ruthless. Well, then and he he's smiles just like, all like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, eating his apple. I had a whole a note about bat. that. I'm like, I like his weird like drywall prison up in his room. It's crazy. But then because I was kind of yeah. like, I would just break out of that. It's drywall. But then I guess. If you leave, you blow up. So what does it matter? Yeah, because you probably even if it even if her name was what Doris. Yeah, even Doris. if Doris had gotten out, she wouldn't have known that she was going to do that. Like she didn't know what he was. No, nah, he didn't. Tell she her. just knew he attacked her. Um, I thought that whole sequence was really interesting because I because it alludes to the fact that that the people are dying, but it doesn't like show much of them if at all. Because I can't remember if it does. It no, only you shows never see anybody Amy. die. Yeah, he just shows Amy ch- changed. It doesn't show anyone else. Well, you so, see that final scene where they're all buried. I think they were changing. I think that's why it took so long for us to see Ed again. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because the only people you see die are the family at the beginning. You don't really even see them die. You hear his sister die. You see the kid run, and then you you see him pull the bed up, and then the kid get yanked up. But then it just, yeah, nothing else. I was talking about the old one. Like, I couldn't figure out if, because it's been a little bit since I watched the old one. I, I was trying to figure oh, yeah, out if, no. if it ever showed anything, and I think it did. And I, I, and I thought that either. was cool that they're adding, they added that part into it because it circles back to certain people. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh. I mean, and it, and it also made sense to what Peter Vincent's character was alluding to when he talked about them being Mediterranean vampires and how they, how they have like their own little, what did he call it? It's a tribe um, mentality, right? Yeah. He, he called it, um, it was almost like they had a den or something, you know? Yeah. I was, was going to call it something else, but den sounds better. I don't know. What they had weird little dirt den. Mm-hmm. I liked um, back to when he was in his house, like that, like you walk in and it's really sparse and looks like 
for anybody coming to visit, like just a single dude lives there. He has one chair in front of his TV. Yeah. But then his office is where you see like it looks like a like a like a professor's office. You know what I mean? There was like tapestries on the wall and like books and like an old typewriter and all these like tools and stuff to show that he is like very old. But he's also yeah. very good at blending in with what people expect him to be. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was pretty good. Yeah, and it's like he had a study. And he yeah. was very uh, wise, even though he, he's not going to portray that because he can't. But it's, yeah, he's not supposed to. So his, it's, uh, it's really neat. His cover is a construction worker on the strip. You know what I mean? He, he was playing what people think a construction worker would look like. Yeah, but then when you open his closet up, it's got like EMT and police officer uniforms. Yeah. And like I was like, oh, dang. He's like. He's using all that stuff. Which is cool because we see the delivery one again later when Ed shows up. Yeah. That's why his outfit's like real big on him because it's for Colin Farrell's Jerry character. I didn't character. even notice that. That's funny. Yeah, it is. So what'd you think about how the vampires looked? I liked the way they looked. Um, I know you don't really like the way they looked. Well, I do up until a point. Yeah. I like the black eyes. I think the black eyes were very well suited. Um, yes. Yes. The black I eyes and the veins up the neck was the really cool. Very chalky looking white skin was really cool how they were how it was done on each of like they like they've been dead a little bit you know yeah, yeah. um and the veins yeah that was really good i and i liked when they were kind of halfway in between changing and their 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 um their fingers got really long and spindly and and the fingernails got really sharp and then they had um their mouths opened up into that big you know toothy you know yeah like they're about, like when they about to bite you yeah i was like I, all that i thought was really well done i will kind of agree with you on the next part and i'll just let you explain why you don't yeah, like, like it i think they from the makeup guy said there was four forms you know you had like kind of just the simple mm-hmm. black eyes with the teeth and then the claws the veins the last one i don't like it at all really i thought it was it was definitely a cg and it's super obvious that it's cg that very end where he's yeah. like weird wet looking now apparently mm-hmm. that was steven spielberg's contribution to this movie uh, he had two i guess he did an insert shot of the crucifix falling in the pool so in front of the camera, you know, when it was coming out of his hand, he did that one. And then it was okay. his fourth stage makeup. I guess maybe he only has four stages. He said that it was not scary enough and insisted the original concept of a shark like jaw be put back. And like in the original movie, they had that big wide mouth full of teeth and it, it made them different type of vampires. And I thought it was cool. Yeah. This one though, I think they took it too far. He looks almost like a human shark. Like his face is all flattened looking and his hair looks kind of gone and he's all slicky looking. I just didn't like it. I thought it looked, eh, could have been better. Would you have liked it better if it had been like practical effects? Uh, Maybe. I honestly, I think if they'd have stopped right before that, I'd have dug it. Like I like, like in the original one, how his skin changes colors a little bit and he has that weird mouth appliance, but that's as far as he really goes. You know what I mean? Like they have the different color. Yeah, the shape of his head kind of changes a little bit. Yeah, it's weird. I, I didn't care It's like care wrinkly for it. looking. Yeah, I didn't well, care the for the first it. one. Yeah, when he gets hit by the car and you see him stand up. I was like, ugh. That was like the first thing I said to Aaron. I went, <laughs> oh, why does he look like that? I didn't like it. <laughs> I was not a fan. I thought it looked kind of weird, but I didn't like, it didn't bother me. Like, I think it would have been better, like you said, if they had stopped at a certain point and then just had maybe the black eyes and the real ashy look with the really large gaping mouth with the teeth, the rows of teeth. I think that would have been enough because he was already terrifying without changing a whole lot. Yeah, we didn't need anything To be honest with you. No, not really. Because he played the character so well that I didn't feel like I needed him to change much because he was already feral, which I made note of that he he played the vampire well because of how he portrayed what kind of animalistic instincts and things that a vampire would have. So like him smelling the air or him commenting yes. on someone's scent and like um, I may mean, know that too very much like a predator yeah and he acted like it like it, it wasn't more like him being like it didn't have to do over be over dramatic with it like it was very subtle yeah. and, but it was there and like his like every once in a while he'd stop and he'd listen and like he knew like going back to him Charlie being in the house it's like he knew Charlie was in the house when he was upstairs with Doris like it's it would be hard not to know that he was he was there you know what I'm saying yeah for sure. He's running so, around the house. Because he, one, he could hear his heart. Yeah. He played up the heightened senses very well. And I thought it was a yes. really good job. Apparently on set, mm-hmm. it's kind of a funny thing, a little uh, segue. He was very um, overzealous, apparently. And mm-hmm. in that pool scene, when he got 
when he attacks Ed, he actually bit his stunt double with the fangs and like punctured his neck. Oh, dang. Yeah, he was that like into it. Like he was playing that role for real. My man's like, I'm a vampire for real. I'm like, um, excuse me, sir. You just bit the shit out of me. He was into it, bro. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of fun facts about this movie that are interesting, I think. You know, like, um, because my favorite part of this whole movie is Peter Vincent, which, of course, is named for Peter Cushing and Vincent Price. Um, okay. And I love the original one because in the original one, not only is he named after those two characters, he's very similar to like how Peter Cushing and Vincent Price have been in some of those Hammer Horror movies, like for sure. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, I really liked at the time, I'm pretty sure when this came out, Chris Angel was super popular. So the, playing him That's being like, like Chris yeah. Angel was funny um, and then just ridiculous. Yeah. Johnny mentioned that. He was like, oh man, he looks like Chris Angel. I was like, yeah, he does. Oh, 100%, dude. 100%. And they actually... um having him play that character was so awesome because like they actually played a little homage to him being the doctor so apparently the cro- the props department put a lot of doctor who references in his apartment like they wrote there was things like on the wall written in gallifreyan what yeah and other you, little i'm gonna pieces. have to go back and watch it just to find like the doctor who things i mean because he's the doctor dude you can't go wrong with having the doctor no but apparently not all of them are visible to the audience so i want to go in those scenes and like slow it down and try to find what all was there you know what I mean? Because they yeah. kind of did it just for him. Because again, he's freaking David Tennant. So if you're into that stuff, having the doctor on your set playing a freaking vampire hunter would be pretty hilarious. A Vegas showman vampire hunter at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought was cool. I, I like what well, I didn't like. I loved like when they got up to like his loft area and it was like, it looked like a museum. And it had all yeah. that like really cool artifacts and stuff and you're like and she's like explaining him and then like she gets to this one part part where she shows like the um the cert not certificate like the diploma yeah from that one university she's like i think he just printed it off yeah but he printed it offline i know and he put and he framed it i like Uh, i was like their interactions were funny yes all that was just like, watched, what? Okay. Yeah. Like, they loved to hate each other. Yeah. It, it was, was good. so good. Yeah, that, they, think, they had a really good dynamic. I think her death is what convinced him to go help Charlie. That and what Charlie said to him, which I did yeah. take note of. Johnny was like, oh, man, that was really good. But I was, like, typing, and I didn't hear it. And I was like, we'll go back so I can hear it. But he, he says, uh, uh, I don't want to live to tomorrow if you are the kind of man I'm going to be. Oh, that was, that was ruthless. It was very ruthless. But he it was true. Like, he was, he was like, he, he was a coward. I mean. I mean, and he said that he said that's how I survived the first time. He was like, I I hid, yeah, and I didn't fight, and that's why my parents died. And I'm like, dang, that is terrible. But but then when he shows up at the end, he's like, I I didn't want to be, I didn't want to um be the man I am either, apparently, or something. So it was kind of a funny way to like reply to him. But he was like, I don't want to be this way either. Yeah. So. I'm here to help. And I'm also drunk, so. He was hammered, but it was funny. He did a good job, man. I thought the whole thing overall was good. His, like, mentor role where he's like, here, I'm going to I'm gonna help you. And he tells them, like, they're called snackers, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, Just for the, the vampire, you know, that was pretty good. I wanted to know a little bit more. Like, he shows the picture of that banner, which really kind of set him over the edge. And he goes and looks at it. They're like, when he decides to help him, he had it drawn out. I'm like, I wonder if it's just because that's what he saw when he was a kid. I was kind of assuming that that what was in the safe i'm just just thinking about the storyline itself i felt like the safe the stuff in the safe had something to do with the death of his parents and like the history behind the vampire that killed his parents that's that's where i was it would have been nice to have that additional information but i feel like it he had to have a reason to go in and, and help Charlie too. Oh, I yeah. don't think her death was going to be enough. Like he was sad about it and he very much showed that he was sad about it, but I don't think her death would have, well, I think that would have caused him to do that. Him knowing it was similar to vampires convinced him to help him the first time, like tell him stuff. And I think you're right. Her death mixed with that comment to him was like, dang, like I, I guess said, I gotta step my game up. I, I guess I should be a, a dick. I need to go help. But he, he did say when he got there, I, I didn't make a note of it. <laughs> Cause he goes, uh, I'm a great date. Get me drunk and I'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he falls through the ceiling and like does not land well at all. No, it falls not. backwards. And it was so good. I was like, yes. It was good. It was, it was. It was an unlikely hero and I loved it. I mean, he was, he's David Tennant. You know what I mean? You can't go wrong with that. Um, no, he did a great job. And there's he's so much favorite. of this movie I like. You know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. was one of them. His character alone is probably, he's probably my favorite character just because he's so ridiculous and over the top. But then really he has this kind of sad backstory. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm this way because I'm, I've seen some stuff. Charlie's girlfriend was a little bit annoying. 
I did like Charlie's crazy progression because it look. I had I had looked at one of my notes here. It just said Charlie has seen some shit. Like when he's at that, all the garlic hanging in his house. He looks like he's been like up for four days. It's like that scene of uh that dude from uh Pacific Rim where he's like hey hey or he's all crazy, you know. Um, but he just had that look about him, which I thought was cool. But I think it was kind of more realistic, right? Because if you really found out the vampires were real, a lot of these movies, dudes are like, yeah, I'm gonna go kill it, dude. I would freak out. Like if you really found out vampires were real. You would that not would just be, be just like Charlie. Yeah, just chilling. Oh, hey, whatever. No, I mean, I'm everything. Freaking out. I would have everything hanging in my windows is just like I'm he saying, did. I'm moving immediately. We're getting up out of there. He'd have killed him, but still. The sunniest place on earth is where I would be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. But then, like, you know, it's one of those places like Alaska where it has 30 days a night. There's a whole yeah, other movie that's then jacked you're just, up. Then you're just dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and cold. So yeah, there was a ton of good one-liners, a ton of good um, just dialogue in this movie. It says it's written very well. I love the way some of them look. I thought uh, Christopher Mintz Plass did a really good job as Ed. He was really funny, especially when he was a vampire. When he's like, oh, fuck, when he dies and stuff. And he's like, oh, bones hard to cut through. Uh, squid and, man yeah and i and i really liked the when he died that he made sure to tell charlie it was okay yeah because he had for a brief second he was himself again and he looked yes. at him he said it's okay charlie it's okay i made a note about I was that like, oh i love that when he died and when uh colin farrell's jerry died they both reverted to humanity just before that the last second like yeah. you see his eyes went normal and his face went back to the original kind of ed just before he turned mm-hmm. to like embers which i thought was really cool just from a graphic standpoint and obviously it was cg but it was done really well much better than the vampire jerry was i thought he looked weird like he had been dipped in ky jelly i just wasn't a fan of it <laughs> um <laughs> jelly oh god that's but gross. i really liked it man and that and he was uh, slick yeah he was strange like he was like a weird shark like he was in a pool <laughs> he or was something. slick i didn't like it uh, that's my oh, only critique no. really um of the whole yeah, movie yeah i don't have a I lot know. it was great it's hard to top peter vincent from the first one but david Tennant, i think did it someone will be mad at me for that but i don't really care he i like both of them but i think i like the story behind this one better because it was more fleshed out well that he was just funnier the other one was kind of he bumbling. Was this one was funny. Like when he's shooting that weird uh, state gun and it d- misfires, he's like, oh, fucking eBay. And I was just like, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's no, it doesn't work. So he's like a dude that was scared, had some money, and bought a bunch of random shit and never tried any of it. And then was like, oh, eBay. Like, just, and he's like, I'm hilarious. going to fuck shit up with my, my state gun, but it's not. That's not going to work. It's yeah, so it was ridiculous. Um, I liked Amy's story arc at the end was very similar to the story arc from the original. Uh, yes, even some of the same dialogue, was. which I really liked. I thought that was really cool. And, yeah. and the, the way the vampires died, really, because he, the, he shoots out the, you know, the window in the first one to open up the light to the yeah. basement. But in this case, it was just to open up the floorboards to the top floor because he broke out all the windows. I was like, that is some clever shit, dude. It I know he's stealing. Well, yeah, he liked some of those things where she's like, you missed. He's like, I know. Like he did, he was, it was very purposeful. And it wasn't yes. as bumbling on what I'm doing. It was like he came to grips what he did. So it was you kind of saw like what we talked about in the Evil Dead episode of like that um that hero transformation. Like you got it mm-hmm. with this one. Um, you know, like it was it he was scared survival. and he was freaking out, but then Jerry fucked up. You attacked his mom, and then it was like, All right, and stole his girl. So he's I'm going in, I'm getting what I'm doing. Cause he was very much he kinda when he talks to Peter, he's like, When he says that I don't want if I'll die rather than be a man like you, like he was he was ready to die. But he was going to do all he could before he died. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, Johnny mentioned something I thought was interesting. Well, it's not interesting. It was true. But he was saying, he goes, you know, the th- he goes, a theme for this movie really is that Jerry kind of forced him into protecting the women in the story. Like he forced him to be a better man by the people he loved the most. He kind of did. Jerry filled that dad role for him. Yeah, kind of. Like he didn't have that. And he kind of taught him like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to take them. And I'm gonna hurt them, and I'm gonna do this or that, and you can't do you can't do anything to stop me. But he was like, "Yes, I am." Yeah. Guess what? He's wrong. But I did like the end, how how he goes out at the end, because I was like, "Oh shit, he's got a, like a, like a suit on, a stunt burn suit on." I forgot that <laughs> scene at the end, and I was like, "Why is he putting a hood on and I, goggles?" I'm like, "Oh damn, he's gonna save himself on fur." I know. I, 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 that's a good idea. I, even until he did, I was like, "What?" And then he's like, "What are you doing? <gasps> You're doing that?" And he's like trying to move. I was like, "Oh, okay." 
fight. And that was wild. That was a cool fight scene too. Even it though you was know hundred cool percent CG, I think it looked cool because you had those cuts between, and we'll probably talk about that in like the visual technical side where it went between like first person from Charlie mm-hmm. to third person of them flying across the room, and then back you see the vampire's transformation through the goggles, like you see Jerry's full transformation. It was really yeah. well done. And I love that room when he, he throws that rock and Peter Vincent's like, a pebble, is that it? And then all of a sudden, all these <laughs> vampires come out. It was rad. Yes. I liked that part too because I like like I said in the first one, you don't get that I, that that idea that it's a nest or like a den of vampires until, yeah. you know, the very end. But like um, what I really liked about it is that at this one, like it, when it started showing them breaking up out of the, the soil, you could tell it was so neat. It looked good too. I don't know, man. I got to say, I, when I first started of this month, you know, with this theme of remakes, I was very much like, Ugh, I hate remakes because most of them are not good. But some of these are t- changing my, my opinion on it, really. This is really good. I like this movie. It was done really well. Like you said earlier, the writing is good, the acting is good. They paid like homage to the original at the best places, um, you know, where it needed to be. And they didn't try to one up the original or get the exact feel. They knew what they were doing. They modernized it. They took the best parts, you know, gave them some love and changed the things that wouldn't work in this time period. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's important. You know, there's a lot of movies, movies that are remakes are based on things from the 80s say like uh watchman for instance it doesn't work now when the movies are made because the feeling of the time like the dread the emotions of that period are no longer relevant and you cannot just rehash some crap from that time period and it makes sense you know what i mean like you have to modernize it and a lot of people are either really successful or they really fell at it and i feel like this movie was really successful all right yeah so with that said let's go into the rubric let's grade this bad boy what do you think about this literary element i know that's kind of your wheelhouse so script story well, development dialogue and character development i think this one did a very good job at doing all of the all the things because i i thought that charlie had had a really good character development. Yeah. I liked the turnaround of Peter Vincent, even though it was, it wasn't rushed even. It was like very slow. Yes. It was done correctly. Um, And then I think the mom's purpose was a little bit more um, fleshed out too in this one. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Than it was in this, in the first one. So I, th- I think the characters were all really well written. I thought they were really well acted out too. Um, uh, I agree. I agree. You got to see a redemption arc and a hero arc with those two yeah. main characters was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Colin Farrell did a really good job, even though he didn't, uh, based on some of the things I've read, he didn't necessarily care for it. Um, he did a good job of being that vampire and playing that character. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I, I don't know how low I would, I, I don't, I don't want to score this super low. Cause I feel like the writing was amazingly done. So, <laughs> Okay. I mean, if you don't have to, like now, I think it's a 25. That's, but that's me. You might not think so. I would say 20 only because some of this writing is rehashed from Tom Holland's script. Some of the dialogue, some of the plot, um, some of the things they threw, they paid homage to was directly from what was already written by someone else. So like for this one's writing was good. Um, and I think they did a really good job with what they took from tom holland but some dialogue is like verbatim straight from fright night 1985 so i would think 20 okay like it's I guess good I'll let you do a 20 well the only reason why is because if we, if we did that with every one of them you know the any type of remake well, i mean certain we remakes, evil dead for the same thing what did we i didn't the like writing the writing on the evil i know dead. but part of why we didn't like it or part of why i didn't <laughs> give any high points myself was because it's not you wrote it and there's definitely a lot of this story they wrote and that's why i would go with a 20 but there's a lot of it that was already written for them like the bones were there yeah whereas if this was like a fleshed out like i made this up myself and not a remake mm-hmm. i would think a 25 i guess because i don't know i don't remember the the word the specific verbatim words from the first one so well, almost I'll go- amy says at the end is straight from the other movie the welcome to oh, Fortnite yeah, for I real do- stuff is all when- redone I, I do recall the the part where she's um saying something to Charlie when she's about to bite him. That that yeah. was something that I do remember Amy saying in the first one. And so it's I not all of it. Um, I just... I feel like cause, because it's a remake and they did take so much from the original plot-wise... You didn't really come up with a lot of this movie on your own. Well, no, because it's a it's a remake. Exactly. I mean, so a lot of the writing, the writing was better. Was done though. for them. It was, and that's why I would give it a twenty, not like a fifteen. 
because it was really good. Okay. okay. I guess I'll let you just I, I know you're thinking story. I'm taking points off, but it's only because not all of it was their writing. She adapted something that was already written. That makes sense. Know, but it was so good. It was really good. So, I, I, I mean, how about I, we go to like will... 22? <laughs> We'll give it a half. How's that? 20. That's and, fine. Yeah. That's better. Only because y- you could have the bones of a story and either d- do it justice or do terribly. Yeah, but you did didn't write that. Good job. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my thing is that like, with having, had they taken the bones of the story and written their own story, then it's just using that as inspiration. But they just like, it was kind of like this, the book we're reading, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Most of that is the original text with stuff added oh, to it. Oh, well, yeah, but it's also. Um, has her name on the front. I know. I'm just saying, but the same thing. You can't take credit for the whole thing. And this one does too. It says based on. Well, because she's a screenwrite. That's yeah. why. Yeah. She's, Screenwrites she's... are going to do that. So it was good. I mean, I'm giving, I'm not saying it's bad. It's, it was great. It was, you know, not as. Hey, not there's going to be times where we come to blows on stuff. And this it's is fine. where I draw this the line. we're supposed I'm, not I'm... to agree. So what do you want to, <laughs> so you think in 22.5? Okay yeah, that's fine. We'll be nice to give it a 0.5. I'll meet him in the middle. Half credit. I, oh, give, I give a lot of half credit in my in my field. <laughs> Before we go to the next one, I forgot one little point that I think was really kind of cute and funny. Apparently in an interview, Colin Farrell referred to this movie as the greatest success of his career because it led to his mother meeting her second husband that was a friend of the producer that met her on set. Oh, that's sweet. I know, right? That means this man who's a bi- at this time was already a big Hollywood actor brings his mom to set with him. And then she met her second husband there, which I think is kind of funny and kind of cute. That's really sweet. I think so. Well, he loves his mom. He does. He gets brownie points. All right, let's move on here. So visual effects, the elements that connect to the narrative, set design, overall character design, gore, practical versus digital effects. I really... I don't want to nart mark too much off of this one. Um, I did not like the vampire at the end, but I thought the character design was great. Like I love Peter Vincent's character, how he looked and how it was all fake. Cause at first, when you first see him, you're like, Oh my God, why'd they do that to David Tennant? And then when you see him pull it all off, I thought that was hilarious and really good. Um, Jerry's character design was pretty good. It was very modern looking. He didn't look all, look at me out. You could tell him a vampire. He just looked like a dude that would wear construction. Like his backstory was believable. Looked great. Mm-hmm. Um, and other than his final vampire form, I didn't hate the digital effects. Like I said, the the burning bodies and them like deteriorating looked really good. Like when they touched sunlight, yeah. how that worked. Um, I did hate the 3D aspect which i forgot to talk about before but that's more in the visual technical but also a problem of the time um so i'm thinking maybe a 20 on this as well like i really enjoyed it i thought the the effects played well to the narrative um the set design was awesome peter vincent's whole whole room up there was rad like it looked cool oh, yeah. i was talking about like, god i want those chairs things. so bad those big chairs he had i want two of those so bad um so the set design was great the characters looked great the design was good you know anton yelchin definitely played a high schooler very well none of the people looked like like the original one that do look too old no one looks like they were 40 playing high schoolers which i was about that like i think looked really good um yeah the gore was good when he bit them you saw the blood and how you wipe it off his mouth but it wasn't overdone it wasn't like i ripped your throat out vampire it was like i bit you and i'm a vampire you know what i mean like with um doris how she did the whole sh- scene that was awesome oh my gosh i know i made note of that too and i forgot to say that but it but looked good that it looked good yeah. so i'm thinking maybe a 20 i gotta take off five I mean, points I'm- for that horrible vampire thing. i hated that though he looked like shark boy <laughs> and like it <laughs> i'll let you do this one on uh I mean, what do you five. think that's fine okay i mean he did look slick he looks ridiculous i swear it looks like they did to him in ky jelly and gave him some fangs <laughs> get out of here dude get out of my face <laughs> <laughs> all right oh no so there we go this one might get pretty high um visual technical element so the overall aesthetic of the film is pleasing to the eye lighting creative camera shots of movement and lens selection i thought that was well done yes I, but, but i'm also not as um savvy when it comes to that stuff as you are uh, or at least because i know you've 2023 me before. wants to take away so many points for the stupid 3d on purpose shots like the shit flying at the camera and there was there were so many things and angles that are weird but it's because it was supposed to be a 3d movie but i so did like the motorcycle going yeah through the and like car uh, supposed to be ed's okay. cross floating out at you and like when he gets stabbed uh, with the sign there's so many things i don't like 3d movies i hated them and it was a, it was definitely late aughts early you know 
20, 20, 2008 to 2014 maybe was a big thing, right? So, but it, I think it ruined it a little bit because like that scene in the car was added later for 3D, but the angle looks very strange just so you can see the wheel spinning. Not to mention the fact that Charlie's character couldn't get that bike to run and Jerry jumps on it immediately and it just starts, but whatever. Um, So yeah, it bothered me a little bit, but it was because of the time, but like the opening scene was great. All the aerial shots are great. The lighting is, I think, stellar. Um, his whole basement, those shots are really good. You know, that, those through the peephole shots. And I commented on that fight scene where you get those first person Charlie shots through the goggles, which I thought was really neat. So, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it's high points for me. Um, I'm thinking 15, 15 20, because the 3D took away from it. It made the angles bad. I think that was a bad call. I know that was what was popular at the time, but. 3D is all the time terrible, especially for me because I'm like one of my eyes is messed up, so it's hard for me to really focus on it. But I, I, it's a gimmick that I think movies don't need. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, especially now, and I think that took away from it. There's a couple. Scenes. I guess I didn't. I didn't notice it, but that doesn't say much that I didn't notice that. I know that's the thing I always notice. I'm like, Ugh, why is that? 3D? Yeah, it's but, like Johnny noticing tile. I'm not gonna notice it. <laughs> well, think like think like when he kills <laughs> Ed really in the pool, bad. and Ed's cross like floats out of his hand, but it comes at the camera yeah. instead of falling down i i didn't notice and the it. motorcycle like i noticed it floating towards it is jerking I, back and forth to look like it's coming at you it's just not it's for no reason it was just because it was a gimmick okay so i'm thinking 15 20 it's hard though because the lighting is so good um uh, lynn's stuff it looks like it was shot on multi-cam there's a lot of movement which is cool there's some cool area shots i'd give him a 20 on this okay 20 yeah i mean again i'm just taking points off for nonsense like 3d Ugh. i just don't like 3d because it hurts my head to watch it like i always end up with a headache yeah. even if i take something beforehand I, there's just i'm not meant to wear 3d glasses and no. wear a movie or watch, wear a movie well it's a gimmick. watch a movie like you yeah. shouldn't need 3D gimmick in your movie to make your movie good. And that's kind of like, meh, where I'm at. I thought it was a gimmick. And uh, it was a stupid gimmick, I think. Especially for the, these kind of movies in that time period. It was, ooh, look what we can do. We watched it on our TVs at home. You didn't need 3D glasses. Everything looked great except for those scenes. Those scenes are silly for no reason. Like, there's a scene when he's fighting Ed with the axe that, like, the axe comes at you. It's in 3D. You know what I mean? It's like, are supposed to be for 3D. If you were in the theater, you, it would be coming at you through the screen. That's stupid. I don't care. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Steve, I don't care. All right, so sound okay. element. Fun. I really liked the sound element. Me too, man. So the sound represents the um, overall tone of the film, the soundtrack yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. The score, did it was really well done. Yeah, we said it earlier. It, it wasn't a character like in some other movies, but it definitely lent itself to pushing the plot along, to adding that sense of like foreboding or dread. It was there because of that, which I really dug. Um, mm-hmm. And I like the song selection. I thought it was a good job. I it it was fitting I, for the time, but also fitting for who Jerry was, I thought. Yes. I, I thoroughly agree with all that. I like I I can honestly walk away from this movie saying that I were I like at the end of it I was like humming the score to it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. The final was song was good. good. Like all the mm-hmm. the fight songs, they picked the right music for the right time, right? You had that tension yeah. building. And that like I was the first note I wrote down. Great opening scene, great score because the music was foreboding. In that scene with that moving camera and you see this weird square town and then it cuts in the house and the kids running. It was great. So what do you think? Sounds usually your your element. You could go the what do you think for score wise? I mean, I would give it a twenty five. You think a twenty five? Okay. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was well done. I, I there's not a whole lot I did not like about this movie. As which I don't understand why people hate it so much. Like I just feel like people just didn't give it a chance. It's because it's a remake of a beloved movie. I'm- I know, but there's a lot of remakes that actually ended up pretty decent. You know well, what I'm saying? It was at this time frame, though, in the early, like the early, you know, or late 2000s, I guess. It's still early. I don't know. This time period, there were a lot of remakes that were just garbage. And I think people yeah. love Fright Night, man. They, well, they love it. So it's one of those things. Like, imagine if they remade The Monster Squad. Like, we love that movie. But it, uh, we love that movie, but it could potentially be a good remake it if could. the right person got a hold of it. But Don't would you, you go dare. into it saying, how dare you? You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, no, it would be terrible. I feel like that was part of what happened here. It was a lot of, like... Yeah. People who probably didn't even watch it, who just blasted this movie because of what they were remaking. Because Fright Night to people, to horror fans, is one of those beloved movies. Like it legitimately revitalized the vampire franchise, the whole vampire as a a viable villain. Because think about it this is 85. We're in the realm of slashers. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Halloween. 
Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, you know, um, Texas Chainsaw, all these movies that are, it's just a slasher time, dude. It's early 80s. There were no vampire films. This is one of the big ones that kind of brought that back to the forefront and did a great job. Don't get me wrong. The, the original one is stellar, but I can guarantee you if we get, if we, if I ran, if we ran the original one through the rubric, it wouldn't score, uh, 87.5 i don't think it'd be as good as this one i think this one was a great the, remake yeah great actors great shots i mean there's a couple things i didn't like the effects were kind of goofy with his vampire but the other ones made up for like i thought that to me i hated that part but those burning dying scenes where you see their face go back to humanity at the very end and have that especially like jerry's eye like before it pops which i thought was cool um that look of sadness almost like or regret like that was in his eyes you know what i mean like when you're like that was really mm-hmm. good and then his eye popped out i was like that's crazy and i kind of chuckled about it i had a johnny moment and i laughed um <laughs> He does laugh at really weird. I know, it's great. Um, I'm like, why are you laughing? But it was great. And I think they made good choices. So, I mean, this movie deserves a score, I think. Like, I liked they didn't give him a familiar in this one. I thought that was kind of stupid. Again, the first one, it, to me. Well, he didn't need one. No, not at all. And the first one. He didn't one, need one because he had a den of vampire friends. Yeah. Well, that and he was living in the modern times. There wasn't no, like, you weren't living in a freaking medieval castle. You know what I mean? All that original story stuff is just rehashing Bram Stoker. Like, hey, we gotta, we gotta have yeah. a Renfield. We gotta have a vampire turns into a wolf. Gotta have that. Gotta have the woman in the white dress. Um, I think as a remake, this one hit all the points it needed to hit. I think had they not, had it been made a little bit later when the 3D gimmick was dead, it would have been a lot, it would have definitely benefited from it. And I think they should not have listened to Steven Spielberg and made him look like a shark. And other than that, it would have been... <laughs> pretty stellar <laughs> like a shark. yeah now i'll never be able to watch this movie again and not think of him looking like i know it's just those two scenes though when he's in his final form I'm like why are you looking all weird Dude, come on that's stupid looks like he's been dipped in ky jelly exactly like he's going he's going in deep anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so there you have it the remake of fright night is fright night for real great movie 87.5 on the rubric which i think is very well deserved yes and yeah so i there had to fight go. for those last two and a half points though but that's okay you did it was it, it, i conceded to you it's fine i just couldn't give it a 25 because again they didn't write it they didn't write most of the movie like half the bones are not them but i will agree with you the writing that they did is good their dialogue is better and the characters are developed way more in this one than they were in the original. Yes. And honestly, I don't. I only gave the two point five points because Peter Vincent is the doctor. The doctor. I wasn't going to stand for twenty. I know. I I'll, I'll let you add the two and a half. They can't hey. see it, but I can see your eyes. They got all big. You wild. <laughs> no, sir. Johnny's going to listen to this and be like, "Yep, I know exactly what he's doing <laughs> right now." <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I concur. Like I said, it's um, and maybe we need to add some concessions in here for half points. But yeah, it's it's a great film, guys. Uh, go out and see it. I think I had to rent it on Amazon, but it's or no or Apple, one of the two. It's four bucks. I rented it on Amazon. It's it worth it. Good. Worth every penny. It was worth it. Um, I used to own it, but of course I don't have any movies anymore, so I got to rent them. So if you got a chance, go out and watch it, guys, and uh, tell them where they can find us, Jenny. All right, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Horror in the Halls. You can also follow Jenny underscore Dreadfuls on Instagram. You can also email us at Horror in the Halls at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you. Yeah, guys, reach out. And if you are reading the book with us this month, uh, yeah, keep it up. We'll be talking about it soon. All right, guys. So it sounds like that's the bell. So we're gonna get out of here, and we'll see you next time. Bye.